I will call our school committee meeting for September 14th to order. If we could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Introduction to members. Ted Novio, Millville. Carrie Goddard, Blackstone. Matt Catalano, Millville. Tara Scobie, Blackstone. Tara Larkin, Millville. Erin Bonaco, Millville. Lise Carrier, Director of Finance and Operations. Jill Pellegallarani, Assistant Superintendent, Director of Student Services. Jason DeFalco, Superintendent. And we have our student reps here for the first time this school year. So I'll have you start with your introductions and then you're actually next on my agenda. So. Okay. I know you're a veteran, so we'll let you go first. Yes. Ashley Johnson, Blackstone, uh, Stuco President. Um, Alexa English, Student Council Representative. Thank you. What grade are you in? Um, 11. 11th? Okay. And you're a senior. Yes, I am. You made it to the top. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Crazy, right? All right. So who wants to start? Tonight? I can start. Yeah. So. As we begin our school year, a lot of things have been starting up lately. Varsity soccer is currently one and one, and the girls varsity talker team tied their game on Tuesday, four to four. Field hockey has also started up with practices and games, I believe, starting soon. Cross country starts up there, practices next week. This past Saturday, um, the BMR football team beat Bellingham 16 to 14, so that was a great victory for them, first one of the year. Um, the cheer team and the band performed at the halftime show, and the first band show is Saturday the 16th, so I believe it's next Saturday. Oh, no, wait, this Saturday. Oh, my. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yes, and the home show for the band is the 23rd at Bellingham. Um, BMR had a guest speaker yesterday for Suicide Awareness Month. Um, student Council has their first full council meeting tomorrow morning. Um, National Honor Society has their first meeting next week, and on September 11th, stu students visited the 9-11 Memorial, and the homecoming dance is Thursday, October 5th, and it is under the stars. Any questions for our student reps? Right, well, thank you so much for coming. We won't put too much pressure on you and your first <laughs> Is it too early to say how many days? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the seniors? Start that senior countdown. Next time. You're right. Next time. <laughs> She's like, wait. So you're doing the math. She's, She's like, don't laugh. leave. <laughs> so do you know when you last day? <laughs> the I think Chris Branzi said it's the week of like the 22nd and the 24th because one of the last days we're in school, then we have the thing at the Boys and Girls Club, the cleanup, and then just fun days and then our real last day and then graduation is May 31st which is insane exciting because it's <laughs> in May I know yeah all right thank you so much and um, we'll see you at our next meeting October 12th all right sounds good we'll be there thank you thank you ladies and moving on we have consent agenda a warrants and minutes of the meeting for August 31st just looking for a motion for consent agenda A. So moved. Motion made by Ted. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tara. Any questions, comments, or corrections for the minutes? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous, thank you. And next up we have public forum. We go from clubhouse to <laughs> But that's okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. They need us, they know where to find us. <laughs> uh, moving on to school committee, we have our MSBA update um, from the school building committee. Um, and we're, but I'll let you. Right, so we're moving along. Um, I know the Dr. DeFalco and um, leadership have gotten lots of um, information together that um, keeping us on the schedule for the MSBA project. And we have the um, language for the warrants to submit to the towns that we need to vote on. Uh, legal counsel has already re reviewed it and approved it as well as MSBA. 
Correct. Um, so if everyone here is in favor, we can make a motion to get this voted on because it does need to be submitted. Millville, what, the 21st, I believe, is there? Mm, and there's a process for that, right? Ted has to deliver it to them oh. as the secretary. Do you yeah, remember that? I from think being I do fairly remember this. <laughs> I think it has to be delivered to the to Millville, like to the town clerk, stamped and dated, received before September 21st. It's not really planned. And I don't know what time they closed that day, but um, so with that being said, we have a motion um, in front of us that. Mm. So we have two motions for for the school committee, and then following on here are the the motions that will appear on the warrants for each town separately. Um, would anyone like to read the first motion just so we clearly um, state it publicly? <coughs> Thank you. Voted that the Blackstone Millville Regional School District hereby appropriates the amount of $500,000 to pay costs of a feasibility study to consider options for developing a new Blackstone Millville Regional High School located at 175 Lincoln Street, Blackstone, Massachusetts, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, the study, said amount to be expended under the direction of the School Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the district is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to MGL Chapter 71, Section 16D, and the Regional Agreement as amended or pursuant to any other enabling authority. The district acknowledges that the Massachusetts School Building Authorities, MSBAs, grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and any cost the district incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the district, provided further that the amount of borrowing authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the feasibility study agreement that may be executed between the district and the MSBA. Okay, so motion made by Kerry. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tara S. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. And then our second motion, would anyone like to move? That one. Okay. Thanks. I move that within seven days from the date on which this vote is adopted, the secretary be and hereby is instructed to notify the board of selectmen of each of the member towns of this district as to the amount and general purposes of the debt herein authorized as required by the regional agreement and by chapter 71, section 16D of the general laws. Okay, so motion made by Tara. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Um, so just to go a little further into this, um, I'm actually just going to read the explanation that we placed on here last mm -hmm. night. Um, so we're, we're asking Blackstone for $373,050 that will contribute towards the cost of $1 million um, for the expense of the feasibility study. The $1 million cost is being offset by $500,000 that the school committee had put aside in a capital stabilization fund just this past spring after approved by town meetings. Um, and respectively, we will be asking Millville for $126,950, um, which again goes towards, and, and that cost is split uh, by their percentages as each budget year. Um, we don't have Blackstone's town meeting date yet. We're anticipating it to be Monday, November 6th, um, but we will definitely get that date out once it is set on their schedule. Any other? And just that Millville's is set for November 1st. Millville's is November 1st, where they will vote um, on this warrant article that we're sending them. All right. Um, any other updates for school building? 
And moving on, we have recertification of our FY24 state revenues and charges, um, which we do have a breakdown here. And we need to approve the recertified revenues coming in and the charges going out. Um, so I'm looking for, uh, does any, well, I'll, I'll get the motion out and then we can ask questions if needed. Uh, but basically, the governor finished their budget after we had already and came in a little, little different. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the certified um, state budget, um, which will read as Chapter 70, Charter School Reimbursements, Regional School Transportation, School Choice, Receiving Tuition, um, brings the total increase to $310,154. Then our outgoing charges, which we pay to school choice sending tuition and charter school sending tuition, um, it's an increase of $217,000, sorry, $217,000. $217, um, which brings a small increase to our overall operating budget of $92,901. Sorry, the revenue, not our operating budget. This is why we should, we should write out our motions ahead of time. <laughs> um, would anyone like to make that motion? And then we can, it can be further explained. So moved. Okay, motion made by Tara L. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ted. Now I will open that for questions because I did not explain it well. Or comments. Did you want to explain that a little more? Uh, actually, I actually thought it was great. Um, so we, we have a um, change in the FY24 final state budget as reflected underneath Chapter 70, Chapter School re uh, Charter School Reimbursements, Regional Transportation, and School Choice Receiving Tuition. And so you can see where uh, the FY24 certified budget, that's our budget, uh, landed versus where the state budget finally landed. And for any friends or family who are listening at home that are wondering why would there be a difference, as Erin explained, um, our budget process ends months before, um, in this case it was literally months, um, before the actual state budget was finalized, which wasn't done until, uh, I believe, middle of August. Um, so. Um, that changed the revenues, but it also changed the charges in terms of the outgoing uh, tuition dollars that we have to spend for school choice and charter school with an overall change in revenues of 92901 Which I will point out painfully will cover some of our moving costs. So after all, we may not have to dip into E&D for that because that would have also been painful. Um, but, and I'm saying moving both ways. So this, what could have been a surplus, um, we, we will probably spend in the cost of moving back and forth out of MES. Any questions about the revenue adjustment? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous, thank you. And next up, we have our Spanish teacher here, who is going to introduce a study abroad option for 2025 for the high school students. So if you'd like to join us at the table. Well, I sent the packet to Stephanie. If you could speak in English, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not how your classes are conducted. <laughs> and more nervous in English than in Spanish, so oh. I'll, I'll do my best. But if you could just introduce yourself. Oh, for sorry. Any... Um, Jean Rydell, uh, high school Spanish teacher. Um, I guess content lead for the yeah. department. Thank you. Um, for I know coming. a lot of you. I had a lot of your kids so. <laughs> over the years. Some are up and coming, so you don't know them. <laughs> so, um, so we used to take school trips abroad years and years and years ago, and then things happened. Whatever, and COVID, of course, happened, and then no one was taking trips. So now, 
I'd like to, what Dr. DeFalco and I were talking last year or something like that, a year and a half ago, about why don't we take another trip? So I did investigations and I talked to a couple different companies and I, my principal has been on um, a school trip in the, two of them in the past. Um, and so I thought, well, now it's time to present it and see if you would approve if we could present it to our community if they would be interested. So um, I have sent you, I did some research on two or three, so three companies, four companies that I called and talked to, and I settled on the one that I gave you information on, the ACIS, for a couple of different reasons. Um, I checked into EF, I checked into passports, educational travel, connecting classrooms, and I settled on this company because of recommendations from other professionals, other teachers that have gone with that particular company, and also their um, the proximity of where they would put students in hotels according to what they'd be doing. They wouldn't be in a hotel and then taking a bus 45 minutes to get to the museum or the aqueduct or wherever it would be. So that's another reason why. And the number of students that they require for a private tour was less than some of the other companies. They would require um, 20. Of if we would have 20 of our own students, then we would have just a private tour ourselves versus some of the others were like 30, where then you'd go with another school. And this company um, also guarantees that our students only get, if we would go with another school, that our students would only room with our students and would not be with other students in hotels or whatever abroad. So I kind of thought that was important. As a parent, I would think that would be important. I am a parent, so for me, I would want my kids staying with kids that they know versus kids from other schools. So why take it? Um, I think you know it exposes students to cultures and experiences that they may or may not have before, um, opening their minds to different cultures. They get a wider understanding of the world. They become better global citizens, for sure. They get to see what they learn about in class, on not just the videos and the, the books and me telling them about them, but actually experience it for real life. Um, the historical landmarks and key locations and things like that. Um, in addition, I think, to the cultural and language benefits, it, it builds personal responsibility, builds relationships with other kids, um, build confidence. They create lifelong memories and lifelong friendships. I know when I was in high school, I traveled abroad and it was one of the best experiences I ever had. So for all those reasons, I would like to do it um, what else do I, what else? Oh, the timing? Is that what, so the timing would be, um, so Jill and I discussed either February break or April break um, because of the sports and the cost is a little bit less to go in February than it is in April, so we would propose February of 2025. Um, and so that would give families enough time, we thought, to save in order to go. Um, and during February, it's, there are crowds, but it's not crowded as it would be typically during a, you know, the warmer months. But the temperature would be temperate because it's Spain. It's, it's not, new, yeah, you're not gonna freeze. It's not, you know, Quebec or something like that. So it wouldn't be like it is here in the winter time. It'd be, you know, lower 60s or whatever. So let's see what else. Um, so I said 20 students for be eligible for a private tour. If it's less, we'd be mixed with another school. The fee that um, they would charge includes everything. It includes all the transportation from place to place. It includes the tipping, breakfast and dinner every day. L uh, money would be on their own. Um, let's see. It would be their recommendation is so it's you would need five students and one adult to go and after that six students to one chaperone so if there'd be 11 students then it'd be two adults that would go but um are they including one for every six or is it so for every six paid students is there one correct one adult one chaperone. One chaperone. So 20 students will be three? Or three. Four? I think it's three, yeah, because that's like 18. Yeah, yeah. three. Mm 
And so, it's eight, eight nights? Yeah. Or is long. it seven? Um, yeah, I, I gave it to you guys. I'm not sure what it's. Eight, eight days. Eight, eight days, three. seven nights. Yeah, yeah we tried to it's fit like it into the week. Page. Eight yeah. days. Bring one for myself. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think it's great. Yeah. So yeah, that would be the week. So so Jill and I looked at the calendar, and it's the twenty, the fourteenth to twenty first um, in February. And who will the trip be open to? So the trip would be open to stu obviously students within the community. Um, Everyone has taken Spanish at some point in the district, whether it's Spanish one, Spanish two, three or four. I, you know, we wouldn't want to limit it to only the Spanish threes and fours. So I would think anyone that, any student that meets the criteria and. So high school or is it, oh, just, we just have school, Spanish one school. in our eighth grade. So just high school. I would say be just high freshmen. Correct. Right. I would say, you know, if, if, if I had my druthers, we would start with the upper, like the juniors and then sophomores and then freshmen, just as far as maturity wise goes. And seniors, obviously, too, if they'd want to go. Open it up to the upperclassmen first, mm -hmm. sophomores and juniors and seniors, mm -hmm. and then freshmen who are now seventh grade? No. No. Sixth graders. Eight. Oh, so you're saying grade. freshmen in 25? Yes. It eventually worked backwards yes. to this yes. building. Because this, the, like it. these these girls would not be eligible because they'll be gone. Yeah. Although I'm sure they would love to go, but well, she's a junior, <laughs> yes, so she'll be a se se yeah. junior. It would go juniors to eighth grade. Twenty-eight to twenty-five classes. Twenty-eight to twenty-five. Yes. <laughs> right. right. We'll just write that down. <laughs> okay. It's our current eighth graders to right. juniors. Yeah. juniors. Right. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So the academy. Yeah. Right. But you'll eventually, you'll introduce it to the eighth grade before the end of this year so they have time to do the payment plan, I would assume. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, and some of the, stu the students that I have in Spanish for right now um, are mostly juniors. There are two seniors. They would not be eligible. But the juniors, even, I guess, I guess my point was, even if they're not taking Spanish next year, I would still offer it to them since they... Had taken, had, it. had taken it for the four years, for sure. So I wouldn't limit it to just, you know, people who are taking Spanish right now. Right? Correct. Yes. And is 25 the maximum? I mean, 20 students? No, no that's just the oh, minimum to the have minimum. it just be MR Five kids it. together. Okay. It can be up to... We could take 40 kids. We could take we 150 yeah, kids. Take, yeah, right. So okay. I mean, Every six is, is another adult. So it's just... This, this particular company likes to have that number of 20, whereas others are 30, others are 35, and I, you know, so I don't know how many we would get, so. Plus, a, a lot of the professionals that I know that have gone with this company have liked this company better, more for other reasons, better than other companies. I do think That's the right. last time BMR went, it was, a, it was ACS, yeah, it was, yeah. um, very reputable, and their payment plan is amazing. Mm -hmm. So the last time, which was a long time ago, I think the students went to Quebec City. With Lisa, right? Yeah. Lisa, yeah, Demers. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it was just paid for. So <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know any money. <laughs> yeah, so they also offer, um, so there's a personal fundraising page that they, you know, once the students sign up for it and they register, then they'll get a personal fundraising, fundraising page, kind of like a GoFundMe page, which not a sad way, but, you know, hey, Grandma who lives in, I don't know, another state, I'm, I have this great opportunity, would you help me out? You know, 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there, you know, they could do it that way. We could potentially do a group fundraising. There's always group fundraising options as well. Someone would have to own, own that and then, you know, car wash or whatever, whoever would want to step up and do that. Yeah. It might fall on to me. But if there'd be a parent that would want to, you know, own that and kind of rally the troops to try and do a group fundraising project that certainly could certainly do that and then we could divvy it up however we want to do that and they, they told me that I could get that to them however to put it on the parents who participated or just across the board or however we want to do it any, awesome. any other questions for Sounds good. Yeah. great opportunity
Thank you for putting this together, Jean. Mm -hmm. So we would like to send it out, send a note. Yes, out. we, we want permission to. We want, yeah, that's why we're, yeah. Can we yeah. advertise to? It is on our agenda as action required. So typically we approve uh, any overnight field trips. So um, though it's listed as study abroad, it is a field trip. Um, we do have a field trip request form here. Oh. <laughs> it just seemed really <laughs> That's what it is. Hopefully I, I did everything as possible. It seems silly with the <laughs> right. going to Spain. Right. <laughs> a lot of it is pending, so <laughs> we don't know. We get to get anybody. So we do have <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. But of course, I don't know the number or anything like that because... Yeah. If you could just come back and give us an update like as things move, I, I think we'd appreciate knowing... Kids you know, are interested. let us know if there's a fundraiser that we can share out, um, and yeah, and how many kids end up signing up. It's just good to know that feedback when. So that's yes, we have the permission. So we we'll, we'll need to oh, make that's a motion. Okay. Um, I'm getting excited for okay. a motion to approve <laughs> the BMR high school study abroad trip in Spain for February of 2025. Somewhat. Motion made by Tara. Is there a second? Second. Second by Kerry. Any other questions or requests? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. So yes, that is Yay. a, okay. a Thank blessing. You. And we look forward to updates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I share one quick thing, Jean, before you leave? What, what Jean didn't share was this conversation actually happened during the um, Promising Practices Breakfast, which is a very special celebration that we have in the Blackstone Valley uh, annually. And each of the districts in the Blackstone Valley nominates and puts forward one of their best educators. And Jean was our nominee last October. So we get to celebrate Jean and have breakfast. And of course, in true style, Jean was planning a huge trip to Spain. <laughs> so I just had to embarrass you since Sorry. I had you for a minute. Thank you. And thank you for everything you do, Jean. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. All right, next on the agenda is Athletics Advisory Committee. I think we have Kerry and Tara S that have an update for us or some information just on what is starting as our Athletics Advisory Committee. Yeah, Tara and I just wanted to update everyone that we had a great meeting with um, Mrs. Fowlis, Mr. Ducharme, and Mr. Yoder last week at the high school where we talked all things athletics and a big part of that was ways in which we can recognize our athletes and bring positive attention to all of the things that the athletics program does. Um, <laughs> we also talked about um, the athletic director is going to start doing a weekly bi-weekly type newsletter to send out to families. Uh, we the, to what other um, things we put on here. We're going to involve the students Right, so they're gonna work the students into the curriculum, um, like Mr. Juba, Juba's class, am I saying that right? Yep, he's gonna start um, working with um, some of his students to help promote the athletics. So whether it be like sports marketing class, they're gonna start doing hands-on to help with this, yeah. Bringing back the BMR Athlete Athletic Hall of Fame that is outside of the gym as well as I know we've had our first BMR Athlete of the Week so far this year. So just all good things to showcase our athletes and all the effort and time that they put in. And banners. <laughs> We're looking for sponsors for banners. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, are you looking for people to be on the advisory? Like I parents mean, or? If there was anyone who wanted to reach out and yeah. be involved okay. in it. Yep, absolutely. Do you want to explain the banners a little more? Um, so okay, so the banners on. are, it's, Jill, you want to help with this one? <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Um, <coughs> we have um, 
sponsor we're looking for a sponsorship so the sponsors will have um you will create and uh, have your logo on a three foot by six foot um, vinyl banner there's an option for uh, one sided or two sided we've already contacted and um, with nhs print who's helped us <coughs> at a discounted rate for this um and then uh, based on the sponsorship you've got three uh three choices for fall um, for spring or for all three of our seasons um, and the it's great to see that you're supporting the uh, athletics and, and anything that's happening on the track we know that the track is used frequently by the community as well um, but also for the the money is being earmarked specifically for improvements to the field so the vision for the field is to have stadium seating not Patriot seating, but stadium seating and and lighting our field so that Earth, we can have um, so we can have um, our home show and we can have um, any community events and we can have maybe graduation. Like who knows? You know, there's lots of things. So yes, mm -hmm. to to improve our school. So we're very excited and rent about it that. out and make more money. There you go. Yeah. I love all of that. Mm -hmm. It will look lovely with the state of the art track and field area with our brand new school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the intention is for it to coincide with that project. Correct. And, you know, in good faith, put money towards it. So so I think it's a great start to doing that. You can do that. Um, the efforts. So if there's so any businesses yes, that have a business out watching, there, feel free to email me. As well. <laughs> Call the high school. We'll get you we'll get you taken care of. We'll get you on the, on there as soon as as soon as the banners come in, they'll go up that day. Perfect. It's the pricing. How much are the banners? Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you yeah. The banners themselves um, uh, through NHS print is like a uh, hundred dollars to a hundred and eight dollars. How much oh. is it? For oh, a sponsorship. Sponsor. A year sponsorship, I believe, is eleven hundred dollars for the whole year, and you'll have that for um, in the the spring in the gymnasium. Whether the banner is actually hung in the gymnasium or whether it's on our basketball um, program, which would be twenty basketball games. Um, that that's the. Uh, that's the pitch. Go for the whole year, the Dan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whole year. And then, I'm sorry. I, and then the renewal, and then when there's oh, a renewal, discount. it's a discounted rate. <laughs> and is that, is it, we're talking in the gym, or are you talking about on the? On the field. It'll be, it'll be on the track. The first okay. car will be on the track. Right. So Correct. Sam is sending out three options. So if they want, so if they want to cut costs, you can do one season, yep. two seasons, or a full year. Yep. Well, three seasons. All three seasons. And so the banner goes in the on the track and in the gym. It starts no, just the track. Starts, starts on the with fence. outside, oh, then and goes inside, yeah, then, then goes back, back out. In. Right. Yep. Yep. It'll be in one location unless you unless day, you'd so. like more than <laughs> one. In which case, we would be glad to accommodate you no. in the back parking lot because we've got a lot of fence in the tennis yep. courts and on the baseball <laughs> and softball field. In over twenty. Um, uh, flowers have gone out to businesses. Yeah, right? but twenty plus, and just in the um, just in our area. But if if anybody is at home and uh, has a business and would like to sponsor, because you have children who are here and you're not in the Blackstone uh, or Millville zip code, that is fine with us. We're very excited to uh, support our businesses of our children. Any other? Is it possible to put those on the website as well? I'm just thinking as a business, you know, I think they would like to have that be yeah. seen as much as possible. I don't know if it's legal or not. Yeah, have to look at our policy. Yeah, to see. Yeah. I'm the athletics page. I'm, I was going to say, oh, we, yeah, have, we have an athletics page. We can put, we, we can oh, click yeah, a link to sponsors. We could put, yeah. Yep. Or and just have that on a Google Drive. Sponsor sponsor yeah. 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 Strategic pictures. Of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Our senior picture happens to be next to it. Exactly. Everybody and our over. next senior is here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be glad to do anything to advertise and, and partner with our our partners. All right, thank you for thank that you. update. We look forward to more. Can I just mention one more thing? I'm sorry, in case anybody's listening. The alumni, we're looking for possible future events. Blackstone Millville alumni, just putting it out there. Football We're looking for anybody interested to contact us. What do you want them to do? Um, eventually, maybe like homecoming events like that. Okay. We're we looking to about, have them come, maybe give a speech. Yes. We talked about even like the creation of like an alumni 
database yes, where we collect we email addresses from past alumni. Yeah. So then when homecoming is coming or the band show is coming or any big district event, like when we do the spring district of one event, yeah. you can just a quick email out and you know come see the great things that the school is doing now. Yeah. So. I mean, at the very least, we should get our wall of fame yes. members in. Right. For mm. Yes. Show and tell. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. You guys are entertaining a wall of shame. Wall of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Were you volunteering for that one? <laughs> um, how many years are we going without doing the wall of fame? Uh, what did Keith say? The I remember the last one, but I don't remember how Since long. Since COVID, I, I think, think he I said, right? Yeah, he said couple. before it's only COVID. Been a handful. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a lot. It's only been a handful. Yeah. Okay. And I believe the votes already happened yes. um, okay. from last year, but for whatever reason, something happened. So they have that already. So that's usually a winter. Yeah. Like winter. Mm -hmm. We actually, we talked about maybe Game. trying to finagle a schedule where like girls varsity would play. Yes. Where typically like the girls are home, boys are away or whatever, but we would do girls varsity then the ceremony, then boys varsity. So we could have a true community event where all the kids could come out and watch it. Yep. And we'll be recognizing more than one year's worth. No, just one year. The year that was- We're not gonna make up for lost time. No, just one year. <laughs> Baby <Okay>. steps. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Um, and like I said, we look forward to more updates on that. <laughs> Moving on to the report of the superintendent. Great, thanks. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, just have a few items on my report tonight. Um, the first is to do a, um, a fairly brief walkthrough and overview of our Blueprint 2.0 year two um, goals and action steps. <clears throat> so it'll be important uh, for us to remember this at our October 12th school committee meeting because we're kind of laying some foundation for where we're gonna go um, next with our overall goals um, as, a, as a district. So uh, tonight we're gonna look a little bit at a reflection that we've done with our leadership team around where we are with our blueprint. Um, and uh, this will really help forecast where we're going with some of our goals so that uh, when we meet on the October 12th, uh, school committee meeting and we finish our MCAS presentation and then the formal goals presentation, you'll see some of this uh, show up there too. So it's not in your packet uh, and that's because it's a living document and, and uh, all year long this will actually be changing. Um, and so when we talk about our blueprint and our district strategy, um, we wanted to provide some deeper framing for individuals so they had a sense uh, of what we actually mean when we, when we say curriculum, instruction, the whole child community. And so uh, what's laid out here tonight are uh, the specific action steps that are supporting each one of our goals and then a status update uh, of where we stand. And so I won't read all of these things uh, to everybody. Um, and you'll see this repeatedly as the year moves forward um, and the leadership team continues to check in and reflect on our goals. Uh, we'll be doing that monthly at our leadership team meetings. Um, I won't make the school committee sit through that monthly, um, but we will also be having uh, three times uh, this school year, a very large district-wide instructional leadership team that will be comprised of the uh, principals, assistant principals, coaches, uh, some of the teachers that are on the instructional leadership teams in the building and some of our students. So we're actually gonna sit together as a huge group a few times this year and look at our goals, look at our data, actually look at performance outcomes uh, and reflect on if we're making progress towards the outcomes that we're expecting. So we wanna just put a little bit more framing around it because we talk about Blueprint a lot. Um, and you know, I, often uh, I think people have a general sense of kind of the four areas, but they're not always sure of like what specific work's happening in each one. And so uh, you can see that underneath each of our strategy and action steps. So um, I'll read just very briefly the strategy piece. I won't go through each of the actions, uh, but underneath curriculum, the focus areas for us this year are to implement <coughs> fidelity, our new social studies curriculum units and platform. Um, as you remember, um, we were um, blessed to be able to move forward and purchase a new social studies program this year, uh, K to 12. So it's been really cool, actually the past uh, couple of weeks going into classrooms and seeing this work in action. 
Um, I always think of social studies as like the forgotten subject, uh, not because it's history. <laughs> I tried, uh, uh, but because uh, it, it's it, you know at the elementary level, it can feel it, it's one of those things that people squeeze in if they can. Um, and we've been really intentional about not making it that, but actually giving it a dedicated time. Um, and at the secondary level, um, you know, typically our middle and high school teachers will have old textbooks or you know things that they find online or you know units that they've kind of built. And so what, uh, as you know, we did last year was go through a very thorough process and actually landed on research-based uh, curriculum, which is really great. So it's been really awesome to see that in use. Um, additionally, um, we are gonna be looking, sorry, I'm learning how to navigate this screen here. Bear with me one second. Okay. Uh, we are also looking at our science curriculum and making sure that um, we have our up-to-date uh, materials and resources. Sorry, I'm just new to the little mouse here. Um, and so we've gone through all of our curriculum, as you know at this point, all of our core curriculum, which is pretty amazing. Uh, that that is the case. Uh, and so we are now back to revisiting science and looking to see if there are any gaps in our science uh, materials and resources. Um, additionally, uh, we will be looking at standards-based report cards at the elementary level. We're gonna be looking at assessments and we're going to be um, looking at writing. So you're gonna hear more about that as the goals develop uh, for the October meeting, but I just wanted to forecast that a little bit because uh, it aligns very well with the <coughs> curriculum piece of our work. Underneath instruction, um, let me just make sure I can navigate this correctly before I get rolling. Sorry, I'm making myself dizzy here. Good grief. Okay. Um, the first area is to fully align and implement with fidelity the portion of a graduate across all schools. So um, if you recall, each of our schools have developed uh, essentially an explanation of what our portion of a graduate means at their level and have laid out uh, a rubric. So you'll notice here, we actually have a lot of, uh, of our status updates is in progress, because uh, that works underway, um, which is really great. Um, and kind of the neat thing about this tracker that we're using uh, is that each of our reporting periods um, is you know, one kind of separate column. So you can see over a year the progress that's been made or not made for another, you know, for one reason or another. So it's also an accountability tool for us. Uh, the second area is to really ensure that our, our MTSS, multi-tiered systems of support is in place and implemented at all schools. Um, when you look at our MCAS data, when we have those conversations, once it's released um, next week, you will see that, um, that this is a strength of ours. Um, and so um, we have other areas we very much need to work on. Uh, so I certainly don't wanna sugarcoat that. But this is an area that is definitely the schools have put strong systems in place for. Um, and so we'll talk more about that in the, in the future weeks. Um, and if I can figure out how to move this mouse, let me just make sure. There are two other areas here. I'm trying to, I'm to scroll too quickly. Uh, the third is to, again, we're staying focused on data. Um, that's a, a very common theme that we've been really looking at uh, closely over the past uh, few years and making sure that we have real strong data cycles across all of our schools. And again, you're going to hear a bit about STAR data versus MCAS data and looking at you know, whether or not that's the best measure to kind of forecast where we're gonna land or is it a better measure of a formative information that can help us in our real time planning um, and how should we be thinking about that. Um, so we are definitely very good at using data in progress in most of these areas. What we want to do is get better and make sure that the tools that we're using are really going to help us get the outcomes we're looking for, <coughs> which is a whole different challenge, uh, if you will. So we're going to stay focused on that work. And then lastly is um, this idea of really implementing at a deep level our instructional learning walks. Um, I can tell you just the past uh, couple of weeks, Jill and I have spent separately up to about three hours a day just in classrooms. Um, and it's really been, uh, it's been incredible um, spending that much time in our classrooms with our principals looking at the levels of instruction and learning um, that have been happening across the district, um, BK all the way to grade 12. So uh, this will remain very much a focus. Uh, but frankly, it's uh, more important that we get 
our teachers out of their classrooms and into each other's classrooms. Um, and so um, some schools have started that process, but this year the goal is to ensure that all of our schools through their instructional leadership team are out in each other's classrooms looking at instruction and giving their colleagues feedback. Um, we've started baby steps with this, so some of our schools have done what they call ghost walks, which I know sounds kind of funny, uh, but they are uh, essentially classroom visits that happen after school. So believe it or not, you can tell a ton from a classroom without any kids even in it um, based on the information that's there, based on how the desks are set up, uh, based on how the classroom is organized. So our teachers have done a really nice job of doing ghost walks. Um, and some places have moved forward and have already done a couple of rounds of instructional learning walks this last, last spring um, with their colleagues. So we're looking to be doing that across the system. Um, and you know we have a focus on the whole child. That's the social, emotional, and behavioral health of our kids. Um, and we have started this work around developing a whole child toolkit. So these are strategies that we can use to help engage the defiant student, the withdrawn or depressed student, the anxious student. We've had a lot of trauma training um, in those areas uh, through UMass um, and their trauma center. So we are gonna be continuously revisiting how do we work to engage um, those students and kind of keep them focused on their instruction. Um, and then also, you know, how do we support the really stressed out student that's taking five AP classes, that's doing three varsity sports, that has, you know, marching band, they have more things on their plate than they can possibly manage. Um, we have a lot of that at the high school, particularly. Um, so also making sure that we have strategies in the toolkit for our guidance staff and our teaching staff to help support our students who are really high achieving and, um, you know, really pushing themselves. So a little bit there. Uh, continuing, again, the professional development around that work as well. And then lastly, one of my favorite is our work with our community um, because we know how important it is to keep our two towns our great towns together around supporting the schools and so um, we're looking at different ways of measuring the impact of all of the uh, and this was one of my kind of one of my things and we spent a lot of time talking with this as a leadership team um, we communicate a lot we send out a lot of information we try to do events we try to get the community involved uh, and I always come back to that question, to what end, right? We do these things because we want to make an impact. Uh, and how do we really measure that? And so we're going to be looking for ways to really continue to promote the school district, but also think about the impact of that work and what is that actually leading to. Um, and I think this is obviously, uh, this is always important, clearly, because this is about the kids and bringing the adults together around the kids. Um, it's incredibly important when we are looking at you know school reconfigurations and a school building project and i mean you know th this is that that is a community project as far as that work goes so uh, we'll be looking to do quite a bit of work in that space as well and then of course initiating new community partnerships um, you'll see there's a lot of not started so we're not entirely sure where to go with that yet <laughs> so we've had quite a few conversations about how can we you know we've got some incredible partnerships in place um, and which we've talked about over the years, Boys and Girls Club and partnering with their municipality, the library, those kinds of things. But, uh, you know, how do we reach out and work um, strategically and differently with partners that we haven't tapped yet? So I just wanted to take a couple of minutes tonight to just kind of walk through this as really kind of a, a foundation um, for uh, not the only goals that I'll bring to the committee on uh, the 12th of October, but you'll see these themes embedded in, in those. Um, so I just wanted a few minutes to, uh, to walk through those and share a little bit about how we're gonna use the tool this year with that. And I think it's interesting to see how it all comes together too, where your goals will have a huge impact on the blueprint, so. More yeah, to come. Oh, for sure. And, and for me, it's, it's kind of triangulating, taking this information, taking all the feedback from the school committee that you provided through my final evaluation, looking at our data, particularly our MCAS and accountability data that's going to be released soon, and really triangulating all of that and trying to put together um, a compilation of goals that um, are like just like the right fit for where we are in our district's evolution. So I appreciate you sharing that, Aaron. Any last thoughts or questions on that? 
who want to come at our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I handed out, uh, it was not in your package <coughs> because our enrollment changes daily. So um, you ran the numbers as of September 11th uh, for our enrollment. I wanted to give an overview of where we stand uh, currently. Um, this could change tomorrow. So I just want to make sure that um, I kind of put that uh, information out there before reviewing this. Uh, but currently at uh, Millville Elementary, um, at, which is obviously housed at the complex, grades PK to two, we have 360 students. At the JFK AFM uh, Elementary School, grades three to five specifically, we have 358 students. At the middle school, grades six through eight, we have three, uh, 383. And at the high school, currently, we have 392. We have 16 students out of district, and we have 28 students being homeschooled. Uh, we do track the homeschool students very, very carefully, just so you're aware. Um, they have to send letters every year with their curriculum and their number of hours and their schedule. I review those myself. If I have further questions, I do reach back out to families for additional clarification. <clears throat> we eventually approve those. Um, our parents are usually very good about making sure that all the requirements are met. And then in, this, in the end of the school year, they send uh, a status update. Those vary. Some uh, parents have purchased you know, online assessments that they use. Some will tell me Joey's doing good with fractions and I just kind of have to go with it. <laughs> I have no control over that. Uh, but I did want to share that um, because I think it's an important piece to see how many families are homes, uh, how many children are homeschooled in the district and a little bit about the process itself. Um, and then we, uh, every summer, we follow up with our homeschool list to make sure that every student on that list is accounted for. And so if there's not a new application, we track the kid down to make sure that they're safe. Some of those students can be in the same family, right? Okay. Most often are. Yep. Um, it, it quite interesting, uh, you know, we'll have families of five or six children that are all being homeschooled by their parent. God bless them. Um, so, <laughs> but typically it, it's, it's there in the same family. It would be helpful to see. And then, Denise, do you want to give a quick update on our RAVE app? We've yes. done quite a bit of work with that. Uh, yes, we've been working. Right now we're in the process of finishing up, putting in our response teams. And a response team is going to be the people that will be able to share and communicate without it being an emergency, so it'll be an in-district communication. So it'll be a medical response or maybe an administrative response. Currently, they're using walkie-talkies, and we're going to be replacing that with the communication tools that are built right into the RAVE app. So we've gotten all the staff information. We've imported it. We've also got it all set up with geofenced areas, and we're reaching out and setting it up with our EMS next week. So we're really close to getting this. It'll be pushed out to all the staff to start using it uh, after next week when we set it up with the EMS for the two different towns. It has been a, a lot of moving pieces. Um, when we had first started it, we didn't realize all the pieces that we would need. So in order to get all of the staff uh, their cell phone numbers, we had to reach out and request them. So that was a matter of getting all of that data back and now working with each one of the buildings to determine who their response teams and who their administrative teams, who they want notified for each event. And then we also have unique messages that we can send out in it. We can create our own response message. So we're putting that also as an option for what they can pick for their messages that they would like to have as an option for them to communicate with. Are you getting a lot of support from the staff? We have not got any pushback. <laughs> it has been well received. It is a communication tool. It is nothing more than that. It's a way for us to, it's part of our safety planning. And everyone is, is very concerned about safety. So it has not been any problem. Everyone has seemed very much supporting. Thanks, Denise. Thank you. That concludes my report. All right. Moving on to the business office. So in your packets, you have the email for the cell phone grant. I'm going to give you a little bit more background. We have to accept this today. Um, this is a cell phone grant at the middle school level. It is going to be supporting almost $10,000 worth of supplies, which would be pouches and some materials that will allow us to store their cell phone devices because we're going to a zero usage school on the, at the middle school level. 
and it's also going to support some PD of staff training and then some additional stipends for some communication that's going to be happening throughout the school year. So this is, like I said, at a middle school level and it's, it's a grant that's developed and designed to help students learn to use their cell phones healthy and, and communicating for well-being. So we're, we're working hard. It's not something we're doing at a high school level because at that level, um, you know, we've kind of missed it as far as for, so we we're looking to get, try and reach that middle school level and teaching them better communication tools and effectively utilizing their cell phones in a way that's safe. So I know when Mary was here um, last meeting, mm -hmm. she briefly touched on being like the cell phone free. So this is going to support her in her endeavors. Um, they're going to be utilizing them out, not at all within the school. And but it's not just that the teachers are being trained and educated on how to communicate with the students to get them through this anxiety and stress of not being able to use it all the time. So there's going to be that's what the PD is. It's going to be training them to to work with the students. Are they going to have any PD on how to work with the parents that are um, not happy? I'm about sure that will have to be coming. Uh, this is a you know, opportunity to be continued grant. So on our, our next as we as we've gone through it and determined the obstacles, I'm sure they will be rewriting their next submission to accommodate those obstacles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the grant is for. $14,674. So we need a motion to accept the cell phone grant. Madam Chair, I make a motion to accept the cell phone grant for $14,674. Second. Do we have to say, oh, we don't have to say the fund. All right, so motion made by Dan and second by Tara. Any discussion or questions for all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you to everyone that participates in acquiring these books. Our next item on there is the evidence-based early, early literacy grant. Um, this was this is at the MES level, middle school elementary, and it's going to be for the K to two grade level of early literacy getting some more of that support to expand and I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No worries. Um, so it's gonna be from research based practices that they're gonna be working with the students to expand the literacy. This is the second year. We've yes, I'm yes. so sorry. This is a continuation, this is a second year of this grant. Was it the same amount last year or is this more? This is a little bit this more. This is a slight, yeah, slightly more slightly more. The focus this year is on writing. Last year was uh, focused on reading. So collectively, this it's been it's uh, over a hundred thousand dollars. Perfect. Again, a big thank you to everyone. I know Mrs. Schaefer has worked hard on that one. She sure has. All right. So looking for a motion to accept the evidence-based early literacy grant in the amount of fifty-six thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars. So moved. Motion made by Dan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tara S. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you. Next item is the personnel update. You have the list of the newly hired staff. Anybody have any questions about the newly hired staff? I'm happy to see that it's smaller. <laughs> As I am. <laughs> yes. Next item up on the list is our expenditure report. You want to take an opportunity to look at this? Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is the large number that is on instructional for classrooms. Um, we have 8.4 as our budgeted line item. Of those salaries that were budgeted on that line item, 420,000 of them are being paid from grants. So as you arrow over all the way to the right-hand side where it says the budget balance, 
that is a large budget balance, but it is over inflated. So Denise, 430,000 of yeah, that 835 right. is grants. Yes, okay. I'm so sorry. No, no, that's okay. Um, four hundred of the 835 I was, is grants. And then of the other ones, those are uh, current existing vacant positions that are coming up with that amount. And those, we have four unit A positions left to fill. We have a VCBA. We have um, the elementary music at K to, uh, pre K to two, uh, also does some cores at the middle school. And we have uh, a, the STEM position at the high school, and we have the math intervention position at the high school. We've moved a, a tutor, um, a staff member, into a tutor position to tutor at math at the high school, so we can provide some service while we continue to search. Uh, but those are the those are the only vacancies we have left. We we have those posted, and we're actively searching for for yeah for you today. Um, and as you continue down. Do we have any questions about any specific line items? The capital projects line, Denise? Oh, yes. Do you want to touch on that? Our capital projects lines, and you'll see it's the fourth line from the bottom, capital projects, 5450 is the object code. Um, that is where you will see the costs that have sort of process for the MES move. So we wanted to put them in a separate area where they would be very clear and to be able to stand out. And I know we have some surplus revenue coming in that will help compensate for some of those expenditures. These are not the completed expenditures. We still have some more coming. Because um, this <clears throat> does not include the big moving company invoice. So there's another thirty-five to thirty-seven thousand going yes. on that? Yes, yes, sir. So we'll about sixty grand, sixty, sixty, sixty-five thousand? Yes, sir. Um, we had different ex expenditures, and we've been, been speaking about it as we've gone along, of the different things that we had encountered, whether it was some rugs or making a play area or fixing a playground. Can I ask? So, Dan, just yes. so you know, right before you got here, we approved um, the state budget numbers were came in higher than... Yeah, okay, I, I, I did read that. So yeah. our revenue was higher, but our expenditures to <laughs> pay our... Um, school choice and charters was also increased, but we're still at about a ninety-two yeah ninety-two thousand surplus. Ninety-three. So I did state during that time that unfortunately, it's instead of being a surplus, it's going to end up covering the majority of right our and, expense. and which, we, which will benefit us from not having to go into E and D. Right. Right, and so, so but uh, that number seems high, but there was some. Uh, the things that were probably taken care of by the district that like was there some rugs and, and things yes. that done that were due to be um in some of those classrooms right replaced sure as far as covering those floors and things sure. like that yeah. okay so it's not all related to them no yes and no but it's it it had to be some of that stuff needed the move pushed it yes. the move pushed it yeah there you go well like the security posts in front of each building Oh, but What's no, that? those are part of the safety grant yeah, that we had. Okay. So that's not on the. No, those are those are not. The access panel at the new door is part of that. Okay. And we do have, if if the committee is interested at any point, we do have a full accounting. That's why we put everything mm -hmm. on one line, yeah, I, so we wouldn't have to search through and try to find. You know, kind of hunt and peck for all the expenditures they'll all be in one line so if you want to see them they're all going to be charged at the capital projects line so we can run a report for just that fund code the 5450 and you all could see what was there i can have it at the next meeting but right. we are still missing a few costs and just to make the point that's so i'm not just so people at home don't think so it's not it's rel relative to the move but these are things that were some of some of these things needed to be done in these classrooms that kind of pushed it. The the rugs came to yeah. about eight, uh, ninety and nine thousand, yeah. a little less than that. Also, Dan, to your point, yes. things like um, the playground, right? Right. Like, right yeah. Going and let, you know, leveling out some of the pea stone, removing yeah. the yeah. cement pieces at the end of the slide, removing some of the uh, playground equipment that was you know unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, some of those things. You know, at the end of the day, we talked about those prior. Mm -hmm. This kind of pushed that issue. You know, when when we move the kids back to Millville, we're not going to 
make the play- playground unsafe again. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. Like obviously, so it's gonna it's gonna go it's gonna kind of pay forward to the families right. that use that playground anyways. Kind of to what you were saying about yeah, this is yeah. kind of some of that stuff we talked about last year just yes. before the school year started. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any other questions on the expenditure? It's kind of our first glance at this year's, like the first full run of it. So we'll get this monthly. Yes. And you'll see how the numbers move in and out of encumbrance and budget balance, et cetera. So. I miss engaging with Tammy on those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Anything else, Denise? No, no, okay. Next up is our facilities report. We appreciate you always being here for, for a live report. No problem. Mm-hmm. Seems a little early, should I come back? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Listen, I have a lot more about the blueprint we can talk about. No, 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 <laughs> facilities. Well, let me speak first, please. <laughs> I'm gonna read all those actions. A motion to approve all requests. <laughs> Okay. All right, so um, I installed a railing at the uh, track entrance, the handicap entrance at the uh, BMR track. Um, it's kind of a, to prevent anybody from falling off the edge of the track as they're exiting through the gate. Um, I do have to make some improvements to it, as I feel students may try to sit on top of it. So I'm gonna add a couple more supports just to make sure it's safer. Um, the small leak in the pipe, that's still not addressed yet. Um, again, that has to be done on a Saturday. We've got to get that scheduled. Uh, we discovered that the ventilation system in the boiler room is not running. And I think this is causing the gym and the corridor to lead to the gym to be extremely warm. Um, I did have the electrician come out and he found a faulty relay that has to be ordered. Um, it may prove difficult to get because of the age of the unit, but he is working on that. We will get it running one way or another. Moving on to the middle school, there was a large bees nest built into a light fixture outside by the oil tank. It's pretty huge. Um, We did send out notification that this would be sprayed on today, November 14th, and that was done. Um, While he was out here, I also had him address a bees nest that's out in the woods built into a tree that a couple of our cross country athletes got stung from. Um, So that's been sprayed as well. Thank you. (laughs) The chemical they use could take up to a couple of days, he said, to kill the nest. Um, So, and while he was out, I also had him do a large bees nest on the back of the scoreboard scoreboard at the BMR track. Um, That was discovered this week as well. And I also found a bees nest built into the corner of the BMR high school outside by the garage, the old auto shop. And that was addressed today as well. Um, Also at BMR um, yesterday, we discovered the main sewer line leading from the lobby bathrooms down to the cafeteria staff locker rooms was clogged. Um, The lobbies were still able to be used due to the length of the pipe. It wasn't actually backing up there, it was backing up into the kitchen locker rooms. Uh, But that was addressed today. It was all cleared out, so that's taken care of. It was a minor issue, it wasn't as bad as it sounds. <laughs> it sounds awful. <laughs> Trust me, it wasn't. Um, it happened once before, and I was able to clear it myself, but it was closer to the locker rooms than it was up here. Um, it was discovered that it was baby wipes that were found in the sewer line. Uh, yeah. That's been addressed as well. Um, let's see, what else we got? Uh, the sinks at the JFK girls' bathroom right outside of the uh, cafeteria. That's been leaking for quite a while. We have a bucket under it currently to prevent the water from dripping on the floor. Our plumber is coming in on Saturday because the water has to be shut off to the building there as well to complete this work. None of the shut off valves to the sink work, so you gotta shut down the water to the whole entire building. And that will be done on Saturday. And during Monday night's power outage at JFK as well, it was discovered that the walk-ins and the freezers in the kitchen are not on generator backup, as well as the fire panel for some reason. Um, 
it set off an alarm to the fire department. They had to come to respond. So I have Craig Cassidy and our electrician looking into that as well. And at the Millville Elementary School, um, we have a compressor in the boiler room. It has two motors on it. One of the motors went into an overload fault. That was caused by a power outage last month. Um, our electrician was able to reset the fault on that and got it back up and running. And that compressor just controls the pneumatic valves and uh, thermostats in the classrooms. So the second motor is a backup motor, obviously, so it was never an issue. And that is what I have. Questions, concerns? Can I ask that, that at the Kennedy School, Maloney School, that the, the generator doesn't operate the freezers? Um, and the fire panel. So, well, it, it previously did, but we just had that freezer replaced. So okay. when they wired it up, they must not have put it on there. Correct. But that was replaced over the summer. As well as I would imagine the fire panel was on backup. The fire panel was on backup and it has a battery backup as well. Okay. Um, so it just it's just a matter of it how may, long the batteries will last. I feel like battery backup is the way the fire panels work. It's not, probably not usually the generator. They're not generator, yeah. yeah. Maybe our battery backup is the way to work. Yeah. Yeah, either way, the electrician will look into it. I know the one here is on generator it backup. Is. Yeah. But newer building. I was just going to say, the older buildings, I think it's... Yeah, so it's weird. But it weird. might be worth doing, looking into. It's weird, too, because the JFK side, they had those emergency lights on the wall. So it was very dark when I went in there. But the AF Maloney side has a couple of light fixtures that are built into it, so because it's newer. <clears throat> Does the fire department, shouldn't, no. Shouldn't the fire department be inspecting these at the beginning of every school year, like those emergency panels? And we also have a company that comes in and, and yeah. tests as well. All right. Unless you have a power outage and the transfer switch switches over, you really don't know this. You will be. All right. Any other questions? Perfect. So. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. So next up, we have facility requests. Um, I have two. Do you have any? Other yes, we had one that just came in, and um, the reason we put it are, are going to bring it forward tonight is because the first is on event is on October fifth, so it wouldn't be before um, before our next meeting. Can you see this one. It's but is this the, the one? With the no, this, the second. The oh, okay. Yeah, yeah the the Girl Scout one. This is a different Girl Scout group. That one um, you did the last time. Okay. And then we have the Black Summer League Basketball League. Um, the only question I had about the basketball is, did we usually have Friday night practices? Do, do we have a custodian Friday nights? Yes. Because I felt like we did. it was Monday through Thursday. We did. We used it on Fridays. And the custodians were Friday. Mm -hmm. It just looks funny to me. Yeah, the, the school. No. The town? BMY. Okay. Well, so this request, this requ the first request, it says request number one, is for AFM and mobile gym, Monday through Friday, October to March, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And it's just going to be their practices, town and travel, I'm sure. The other one is a request for just their tryout weeks, which is before our basketball season, October 23rd through November 9th. So I assume we'll get another request for the Saturday games. game days, and because that's not even included on this Milvo one. The, for I Saturday think it's morning. because we'll do it Jen is they, waiting to see. After they get teams. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, and then the one Jason has is for JFK. For a Girl Scout troop, um, with every date listed specifically, but it's essentially looks like it's twice a month, um, October through June, which is a typical Girl Scout meeting time. Um, and and we already know that these go through our secretaries with this calendar, so coming to us, we know that the dates are cleared. Um, I'm looking for a motion to approve the three facility requests as. Delivered. Motion made by Tara L. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Chair. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. And moving on to committee forum. Um, did you um, mention anything about any dates? No, if you want to do that, I would appreciate it. Um, we're actually, we did briefly, when we made our motion for the feasibility study warrant articles, but if you want to give us a little more update. Um, it, it'll be on the Board of Selectmen's agenda for Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. So the Blackstone date will be confirmed after Tuesday. Tuesday night, yeah. And we noted Monday, uh, Millville's is set for November 1st when we did our, but I think we'll consistently remind everyone at our committee forum of our upcoming town meeting dates. Anything else to add? Uh, no, not at this time. Which, if we had an alumni database, it would be a good way to inform yes. people of town meeting dates <laughs> when important <laughs> votes are about to happen. So is the advisory committee working on it? It's, on one, it's one of our action it's steps. So. That would be great to have. Is an alumni database like Facebook? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's that. Too. Not that alumni. <laughs> right. Any other committee forum? Just um, the school building project. I should have said this earlier. Um, we do have a web page now on the district website. So people who need want more information about the project can um, follow all of our minutes and agendas and all the details of the feasibility study and whatnot will be there. Lots of information. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that looks great. Thank you guys for getting that linked up. Anything? No? All right. Uh, our, up, our next meeting is October 12th. Uh, here and we are looking to move our November 9th meeting to November 2nd however we can be flexible with that day if Blackstone needs November 2nd as a town meeting date we could always meet Monday the 6th so um, you think we should wait till our October 12th meeting to move our November meeting yes okay if everyone could just keep November 2nd open um, or open it up if it's not open, I saw you. <laughs> but um, November 9th needs to be adjusted. But I can't go to that one. I was going to miss it. Oh, you were going <laughs> to miss it? We don't want you to miss it. That's where yeah. we're going to move it. That was all for me. <laughs> all right. And, um, are we moving November 9th because of the Veterans Day? Yes. Okay. That's the reason. Yes. Okay. I don't know if November there 2nd is no would be. There's no school November 10th. Am okay. I right? Right. right. You don't have serving it on the, the, okay. the no Friday. There's no school November 3rd and then November 10th. Correct. A professional development day and then the Veterans Day. Yeah, they only go to school on the 17th for a Friday in November. <laughs> One Friday. One Friday. Because <laughs> they have the Thanksgiving holiday. Mm. Yep. Mm. I know someone on my street that would be so happy to hear that. <laughs> um, all right, so... Looking for a motion to move into executive session. And it's a roll call. So I'll make a motion. motion. Yes. Motion made by Ted. Motion made oh. by Ted. Yes. <laughs> and I don't really do our uh, <laughs> roll second. call. Second roll by call. Dan. Right. And roll call. Ted. Yes. Harry. Yes. Dan. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Tara. Yes. Tara. Yes. All right. Thank you. Are we off camera? Ted, I need you to sign these things.